Once upon a time, in a world rapidly transforming, we find ourselves amidst a revolution in the way we work. Walls no longer confine us, and distance is merely a digital hurdle. This, my friends, is the age of virtual teams, where talent knows no geographical boundaries. But this brave new world of work brings with it a unique set of challenges, particularly when it comes to something as crucial as feedback. How do we ensure our words resonate, motivate and inspire when delivered through the impersonal glow of a computer screen? This is a question that has plagued even the greatest leaders throughout history. From the sprawling empires of antiquity to the boardrooms of modern corporations, the ability to deliver effective feedback has always been paramount to success. Consider, if you will, the Roman Empire, a vast tapestry of cultures and languages. Imagine a Roman general, seasoned by countless battles, tasked with leading a legion comprised of soldiers from across the empire. His challenge? To communicate effectively with a diverse group, each accustomed to their own unique communication styles. Fast forward to today, and the parallels are striking. We too navigate a global village, collaborating with colleagues from diverse backgrounds, each shaped by their own cultural norms and communication styles. A direct approach that might be well received in one culture might be misconstrued as harsh in another. The key then lies in understanding these nuances, in adapting our communication styles to bridge cultural divides and foster an environment of trust and mutual respect. Throughout history, the power of well-delivered feedback has been instrumental in shaping destinies. Consider the role of mentors in the lives of great leaders. Think of Aristotle's guidance of Alexander the Great, or the profound impact of Mahatma Gandhi's mentors on his philosophy of non-violent resistance. These historical examples underscore the enduring importance of feedback in shaping not only individual growth, but also the course of history. In the context of virtual teams, where personal interactions are limited, mastering the art of feedback becomes even more critical. So join me as we embark on this journey to unlock the secrets of mastering feedback in virtual teams, drawing upon the wisdom of the ages and the insights of modern research to help you navigate this critical aspect of leadership in the 21st century. Oh, the Silk Road. Imagine, if you will, the bustling marketplaces of ancient times where merchants from the East and West converged, their languages as diverse as the silks and spices they traded. This, my friends, was the crucible of intercultural communication, a melting pot of languages, customs and indeed feedback styles. Picture a Chinese trader whose silk robes rustling as he negotiates with a Roman merchant. Their words punctuated by gestures and expressions. The Roman, accustomed to directness, might express his feedback bluntly, while the Chinese trader, valuing harmony, might convey his thoughts with subtle cues and indirect language. These ancient interactions underscore a timeless truth. Effective communication transcends mere words. It requires an understanding of cultural nuances, a sensitivity to non-verbal cues, and an ability to adapt one's communication style to bridge cultural divides. The lessons learned on the Silk Road, my friends, remain as relevant today as they were centuries ago. As Europe emerged from the Dark Ages, a new era of intellectual and artistic flourishing dawned, the Renaissance. This period of rebirth wasn't merely confined to the arts and sciences, however. It also witnessed a revolution in communication. The invention of the printing press by Johannes Gutenberg in 1440 democratized knowledge 
and transformed the way information was disseminated. Imagine the impact of this invention on communication. Suddenly, ideas could be shared far and wide, transcending geographical boundaries and linguistic barriers. This led to a flourishing of intellectual discourse, with scholars and thinkers from different parts of Europe engaging in lively debates and exchanging feedback through written correspondence. This era highlights the importance of adapting to new communication mediums. Just as Renaissance thinkers embraced the printing press to disseminate their ideas, so too must we today harness the power of digital platforms to foster effective communication in virtual teams. The age of exploration, a time of daring voyages and uncharted territories, presented unprecedented challenges and opportunities in intercultural communication. European explorers, venturing into lands unknown, encountered civilizations with languages, customs and worldviews vastly different from their own. Consider the encounters between Spanish conquistadors and the Inca Empire. The Spaniards, driven by conquest and gold, often failed to understand the Inca's sophisticated system of governance and communication, leading to misunderstandings and conflict. On the other hand, explorers like Hernán Cortés, who took the time to learn the local languages and customs, were more successful in navigating cultural differences and forging alliances. This era reminds us that effective communication requires more than just linguistic proficiency. It demands cultural intelligence, a deep understanding and respect for different perspectives, and a willingness to adapt our communication styles to build bridges of understanding. The Industrial Revolution, marked by mechanization and mass production, brought about a standardization of communication. The need to coordinate large workforces and ensure efficiency led to the development of standardized procedures and communication protocols. The steam engine, a symbol of this era, required precise instructions and coordinated efforts to function effectively. Imagine the chaos that would ensue if engineers and workers lacked a common language or a standardized system of communication. The Industrial Revolution teaches us the importance of clarity, conciseness and consistency in communication. In the context of virtual teams, this translates to establishing clear communication channels, using concise and unambiguous language and ensuring that feedback is delivered in a consistent and timely manner. Ah, the complexities of the human mind. It's a subject that has fascinated scholars and philosophers for centuries. And when it comes to feedback, understanding its psychological impact is paramount. You see, the way we receive feedback is deeply intertwined with our emotions, our self-perception and our cultural upbringing. Daniel Goleman, in his seminal work, Emotional Intelligence, 1995, brilliantly elucidates the profound influence of emotions on our thoughts and actions. Goleman posits that our ability to perceive, understand and manage emotions, both in ourselves and others, is crucial for effective communication and relationship building. Feedback, when delivered with empathy and emotional intelligence, can be a powerful tool for growth and development. However, poorly delivered feedback can trigger defensive mechanisms, erode trust and hinder progress. It's like a delicate dance requiring finesse and sensitivity to strike the right chord. Navigating the intricate tapestry of cultural differences is akin to traversing a labyrinth, each turn revealing unique perspectives and communication styles. What might be considered direct and constructive feedback in one culture could be perceived as harsh and disrespectful in another. Consider, for instance, the contrast between individualistic and collectivist cultures. 
In individualistic cultures such as the United States or Australia, direct feedback is often valued for its clarity and focus on individual performance. However, in collectivist cultures such as Japan or China, feedback tends to be more indirect, emphasizing group harmony and saving face. Understanding these cultural nuances is not merely about avoiding faux pas. It's about fostering an inclusive and respectful work environment where feedback is perceived as a gift, an opportunity for growth and mutual understanding. Trust, my friends, is the bedrock of any successful team, particularly in the virtual realm where physical presence is absent. And empathy, the ability to understand and share the feelings of others, is the mortar that binds trust together. When providing feedback in a virtual setting, it's paramount to remember that there's a human being on the other side of the screen, someone with their own experiences, perspectives and emotions. Taking the time to understand their point of view, to see the world through their lens, can make all the difference in how feedback is received. Empathy and feedback is not about shying away from difficult conversations or sugarcoating the truth. It's about delivering feedback with kindness, respect, and a genuine desire to help the recipient grow and improve. In the symphony of communication, active listening plays a pivotal role, especially in the virtual world where non-verbal cues can be easily missed. It's about truly hearing and understanding the message being conveyed, not just waiting for your turn to speak. Active listening involves paying close attention to both verbal and non-verbal cues, asking clarifying questions to ensure understanding and reflecting back what you've heard to confirm comprehension. It's about creating a space where the other person feels heard, valued and respected. In a virtual setting where distractions abound, mastering the art of active listening can be challenging yet incredibly rewarding. It's a testament to your commitment to understanding and connecting with your team members on a deeper level. Now let's roll up our sleeves and delve into the practicalities of delivering effective feedback in the virtual realm. The absence of face-to-face -face interaction can make this a tad tricky, but fear not, for I shall arm you with tips to bridge this virtual divide. Firstly, choose your medium wisely. A quick message might suffice for minor feedback, but for more nuanced discussions, opt for video conferencing. A 2023 study by the Harvard Business Review found that video calls, by facilitating nonverbal communication, increased empathy and understanding in remote teams. Secondly, be mindful of time zones. Receiving feedback in the dead of night isn't anyone's cup of tea. Schedule feedback sessions at times convenient for all parties involved. This seemingly small gesture speaks volumes about your respect for their time and well-being. Lastly, be specific and provide actionable advice. Instead of saying that report wasn't good, offer concrete suggestions. I noticed a few inconsistencies in the data. Perhaps double-checking the figures would strengthen the report. See? Specific and helpful. non-verbal communication, the subtle language of raised eyebrows, the knowing nod, the reassuring smile. These cues might seem lost in the digital ether, but fret not, for they hold immense power even in the virtual realm. A 2022 study published in the Journal of Nonverbal Behavior revealed that even in video calls, people unconsciously mirror each other's nonverbal cues. This mirroring fosters a sense of connection and builds rapport. So how do we leverage this in virtual feedback? Simple, maintain good eye contact, or rather webcam contact. Nod along to show you're listening, smile when appropriate. 
These subtle cues convey warmth, empathy and engagement, making the recipient more receptive to your feedback. Remember, my friends, communication is not just about the words we utter, but also about the unspoken signals we send. Master these non-verbal nuances and you'll be well on your way to delivering impactful feedback in the digital age. Now let's talk about creating a culture where feedback thrives. A virtual ecosystem where feedback is not feared, but embraced as a catalyst for growth. This, my friends, is the hallmark of high-performing virtual teams. Firstly, establish clear feedback mechanisms. Don't leave it to chance encounters or sporadic emails. Integrate regular feedback sessions into your team's workflow. This could be weekly one-on-ones, project debriefings, or even dedicated feedback channels on your communication platform. Secondly, encourage a growth mindset. Foster an environment where mistakes are seen as learning opportunities, not failures to be punished. When team members feel safe to experiment and learn, they're more likely to embrace feedback and strive for continuous improvement. Remember, a feedback culture is not a one-time initiative. It's an ongoing process of nurturing open communication, mutual respect, and a shared commitment to excellence. The moment has arrived. The virtual feedback conversation awaits. Don't let the digital divide intimidate you. With the right approach, you can transform this interaction into a positive and productive experience. Firstly, set the stage for a constructive conversation. Begin by acknowledging the recipient's contributions and reiterating your commitment to their growth. This sets a positive tone and helps alleviate any apprehension. Next, be specific and focus on observable behaviours. Instead of saying, your communication needs work, provide concrete examples. I noticed that during yesterday's meeting, you interrupted Sarah twice. It's important to give everyone a chance to speak. Finally, end on a note of encouragement and support. Reiterate your belief in their abilities and express confidence in their ability to improve. A little encouragement goes a long way in fostering a positive feedback experience. Our Abraham Lincoln a man who steered a nation through its darkest hour, a leader whose words still resonate with profound wisdom. Imagine, if you will, the weight of a nation divided resting on his shoulders, the daunting task of uniting a fractured people. Lincoln's genius lay not just in his strategic brilliance, but also in his profound understanding of human nature. He knew that words, carefully chosen and compassionately delivered, held the power to heal to inspire, to unite. His feedback, even when addressing difficult truths, was always tempered with empathy. He understood the anxieties and aspirations of those he led, and he communicated with a sincerity that resonated deeply with the American people. Lincoln's legacy reminds us that effective leadership, particularly in challenging times, demands both strength and compassion, a delicate balance that underpins all meaningful feedback. Now, let us turn our attention to another towering figure of history. A man whose words rallied a nation facing its darkest hour, Sir Winston Churchill. Imagine, if you will, the year 1940, the shadow of Nazi Germany looming large over Europe. Churchill's speeches, imbued with his characteristic wit and unwavering resolve, became a beacon of hope in a time of despair. He understood the power of language, the way carefully crafted words could stir the soul, ignite courage and galvanize action. His feedback to his people, though often delivered in the face of adversity, was never devoid of hope. He reminded them of their strength, their resilience, their shared destiny. 
Churchill's leadership serves as a timeless reminder that effective communication can inspire extraordinary acts of courage and determination, even in the face of seemingly insurmountable challenges. Now journey with me to the heart of India, where a man of quiet strength led a nation to freedom through the power of non-violent resistance, Mahatma Gandhi. Imagine a leader who eschewed the traditional trappings of power, choosing instead the path of humility and service. Gandhi's leadership was rooted in his unwavering belief in the inherent goodness of humanity. He understood that true change stemmed not from coercion, but from within. His feedback, often delivered through personal example and quiet persuasion, empowered others to find their voice and fight for their beliefs. He led by example, embodying the values he espoused. His life itself became a testament to the transformative power of truth, compassion, and non-violence. Gandhi's legacy reminds us that true leadership lies not in wielding authority, but in empowering others to discover their own potential and become agents of change. Finally, let us journey to the dawn of the digital age, where a brilliant mind laid the foundation for the interconnected world we inhabit today, Alan Turing. Imagine a world without computers, without the internet, without the virtual teams that have become integral to our modern workforce. Turing's genius lay in his ability to break down complex problems into a language that machines could understand, binary code. His work underscored the paramount importance of clear, unambiguous communication, a principle that remains as relevant today as it was in the nascent days of computing. Just as Turing's code formed the building blocks of the digital revolution, so too does clear communication form the foundation of effective virtual teams. When we communicate with clarity, conciseness and empathy, we create an environment where ideas can flourish, collaboration can thrive, and feedback can be received as a gift that propels us towards collective success. And so, my friends, we come to the end of our historical journey, a journey that has taken us from the bustling marketplaces of the Silk Road to the virtual boardrooms of the 21st century. We've explored the evolution of communication, delved into the psychology of feedback, and gleaned insights from some of history's most renowned leaders. Just as a tapestry weaves together countless threads to create a work of art, so too does effective feedback interweave empathy, cultural intelligence, active listening, and clear communication to create a harmonious and high-performing virtual team. The lessons we've gleaned from history, from the ancient wisdom of the Silk Road to the digital revolution spearheaded by Alan Turing, remind us that communication in all its forms is fundamental to human progress. Whether we're leading a legion of Roman soldiers or collaborating with colleagues across continents, the principles of effective feedback remain timeless. By embracing these principles, by understanding the nuances of intercultural communication and by harnessing the power of technology, we can unlock the true potential of virtual teams and navigate the complexities of our interconnected world. Now, my friends, it's time to take the reins of your own leadership journey. The insights we've uncovered today are not mere historical anecdotes. They are powerful tools waiting to be implemented in your own virtual teams. Remember, effective feedback is not a skill reserved for a select few. It's a craft that can be honed with practice, dedication and a genuine desire to empower those around you. Take a moment to reflect on the leaders we've discussed today. What resonates with you about their approach to communication and feedback? 
How can you incorporate their wisdom into your own leadership style? Remember, the journey to leadership excellence is not a solitary pursuit. It's a collaborative endeavor that requires us to learn from the past, embrace the present, and shape the future together. And if you're seeking guidance on this transformative journey, remember that you don't have to navigate these complexities alone. At M. Yoga Coaching and Consulting, we're dedicated to empowering individuals and teams to reach their full potential. We're your trusted allies in this ever-evolving world of work, providing personalized coaching, cutting-edge insights, and unwavering support to help you thrive in the digital age. As we conclude our exploration of feedback in the virtual realm, let us remember that at its core, feedback is an act of generosity. It's an opportunity to share our perspectives, to offer guidance and to help others grow. And when delivered with empathy, clarity and a genuine desire to empower, feedback has the transformative power to unlock potential, foster innovation and build stronger, more resilient teams. So, my friends, embrace the art of feedback. Make it an integral part of your virtual team's DNA. And remember the words of the great management guru, Peter Drucker, who wisely said, the most important thing in communication is to hear what isn't being said. Let us all strive to be better listeners, more empathetic communicators, and more effective leaders in this digital age. Together, we can create a world where feedback is not feared, but embraced as a catalyst for growth, innovation and collective success.